Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Salar Khan YouTube channel. We've been discussing about the liquid dielectrics. Today, we see a little bit of a numerical examples. Okay, we've seen the mechanism of breakdown, we've seen the introduction, we've seen it in a detail. Today, we see a little bit of a numerical examples. Now, the thing is that we, we when we talk of liquid dielectrics, so we've got two types of problems with it, which we can deal numerically with over here. So number one is the moisture that it contains moisture it will degrade the dielectric strength and number two is the problem of oxidation so both of these we will see numerically today number first the moisture is that presence of 0.01 percent of moisture i believe 0.01 it is uh, yes 0.01 percent of moisture will reduce the dielectric strength by 20 percent okay and the second one is for uh, the the oxidation so the, for the oxidation we've got a differential equation which is given by this differential equation plus p times s over v times uh, g of t is equal to i believe isn't it like this it is p times s by v g of t is equal to p times s by v g m so i i will come to this later on First, let me ask you a question that talking of liquids as an insulation, why is water not used as an insulation? So I asked you this question previously as well. So today let me answer it. The reason is although its dielectric strength is very high, dielectric strength, the dielectric constant, the dielectric constant of water is 78 to 80. Now, is water an insulator or is it a conductor? So, I will not go into that. I'm just talking about uh, this is pure water, okay? This is pure water, not your drinking water. The pure water, where do you get it normally in your home? Uh, the, the most common area. So, from your ACs or from your fridges, the water that you get from condensation is what that is pure water and has got a dielectric strength of 78 to 80, which means that it is its dielectric properties are 78 to 80 times stronger than that of air. For transformer oil, the dielectric constant is 3 to 4, right? So, which means it has got superior dielectric properties, but why is it not used? So, why it is not used so number first the the most important reason is due to its vulnerability it absorbs gases it dissolves everything into itself right it mixes everything with itself so it dissolves gases it dissolves mineral etc and the other thing is this i'm talking about is pure water so this is acidic in nature right yes the natural resources of uh, naturally occurring resources of water they are not pure water so if the water is not pure then it has got ions in it and other impurities so then it is not an insulator then it is a good conductor of electricity so that is the reason it is not used and you know the reason is it can cause deterioration and com uh, contamination so i talked about it mixes everything in itself it is you know easily it evaporates easily and the other thing is that you know uh, 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 maybe uh, it has got a lesser boiling point we have other uh, insulating liquids that has got a higher boiling point so it can operate to higher uh, temperature limits so temperature limitations are not there other is that it can you know cause corrosion in the metals right yes uh, the thing is, uh, one day a, a teacher was talking about that he, in his Manchester University, he saw, you know, uh, 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 resistances that were present in sealed glass tubes containing water. So that was basically water insulation. Now, I don't know whatever the thing is or the process is, but, you know, it is there. It can be used, right? Yes. So, one other thing. Why SF6 is not used in a transformer? Why a transformer is not gas insulated? This is another question. We talked about transformer oil in the previous video. So the answer to this is that, you know, we saw that there is a high pressure inside the transformer. Very high temperature is present. And if you're using a gas insulation, so you have to use it in the pressurized form. You have to use it in the pressurized form. So if you, if there is already a pressure building up, a higher temperature inside the transformer and you introduce a pressurized gas as well, so the thing is that there is always a chance of explosion. 
There is always a chance of explosion. Although SF6 has got good dielectric properties, it has got good cooling properties, but it is not effective in the long run. It may go for explosion. It may be expensive as well. Experiments have been carried out, but it has been failed. In the long run, the transformer oil is the best option. So you come to 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 the numerical examples. Let's say uh, where do I have? If, if you want me to start them from the book, so let me start them from the book. Example number 4.1 says what? A sample of pure dielectric has a uniform, has a dielectric strength of 0.45 megavolt per centimeter. So this is example 4.1 and it says that it has got a sample has got a 0.45 megavolt per centimeter strength. Understand about the conditions STP with uniform field electrodes, it's contaminated with 0.03% moisture by volume during service. So it has got 0.03% moisture by volume during service. Calculate the reduction in the dielectric strength as well as calculate the, the new dielectric strength. So please have a look. I told you that 0.01% moisture I will put an M would be responsible for a 20% reduction in the dielectric strength. So which means what that 1% moisture, 1% of moisture would be responsible for 20 divided by 0.01% reduction in dielectric strength. Which means I've got over here is 0.03. So by 0.03% moisture would be responsible for producing this much of a reduction in my dielectric strength. So please do this 0. Point. What is this value coming out to be? So this would be 0.60%. 60%. This comes out to be 60%. So 60% reduction will occur, which means that you find the 60% of the given value, which is 0.45. And this comes out to be 0.27 megavolt per centimeter. 0.27 megavolt per centimeter reduction has occurred. Which means that the new dielectric strength would be equal to what? Would be equal to 0 0.45 minus 0 0.27 and this is equal to 0 0.18. This would be 0 0.18 megavolt per centimeter. Fine? Yes. Similarly, you know, you can be given in the converse manner. You can be given in the opposite manner is that that if you have a sample of dielectric, you've got a sample of dielectric where uh, uh, the dielectric strength is given and you are asked about the, and you are asked about the what? You are asked about the, the, the moisture content. Have a look. So this would be opposite to this thing. Let's say, for example, you are given a, a, a task by any uh, company. Let's say by PESCO, you are given a task that uh, find the sample. Uh, you are given a sample of the uh, of the transformer oil or any insulating liquid, and you are asked to find the moisture content in it. So when you measure the value, the the dielectric strength comes out to be 10 kilovolt per millimeter is the new dielectric strength so you need to find out the moisture content in it now you know that the fresh sample should be 15 kilovolt per millimeter so have a look what do you do is you find the reduction so the reduction is how much reduction has occurred is 15 minus 10 is a 5 kilovolt per millimeter you find it out in percentage reduction so percentage reduction would be how much this would be 5 upon 15 multiplied by 100 percent and this comes out to be how much this is 33 percent reduction this is 33 percent reduction so have a look we have that 20 percent reduction is for what is for 0.01 percent of moisture so which means that one percent reduction would be for 0.01 upon 20 percent of moisture and over here so 33 percent of reduction would be for 0.01 multiply 20 multiply by 33 percent of 
the moisture content. So please do this calculation and this comes out to be 0.0165% of moisture content. Now have a look, you've got the limit over here as 10 kilovolt per millimeter is the limit for transformer oil. If the, if the uh, dielectric strength happens to be less than this, you cannot use it. Similarly, if the moisture contents happen to be even a point greater than this, you, have, you don't have to use it. The techniques we've already seen, what do you do when the dielectric strength is reduced? You know, what do you do? You heat it up to avoid the, to, you know, exclude the trapped moisture and then you do the filtering and this and that. So we have already seen that. Okay. Yes. Now, how do you measure this dielectric strength? So example number 4.2 is about this. A sample of used transformer oil is tested between two standard electrodes by 2.5 millimeter apart. So I will write this over here example 4.2 these are 2.5 millimeter apart and breaks down at a voltage of 27.5 kilovolt find the percentage reduction in in its dielectric strength so what do you have i told you the dielectric strength would be equal to the breakdown voltage divided by the distance d between the electrodes and you introduce the schwager factor to to you know redu uh, uh, go for the non-uniformities which is a 0.97 in this case so please put down the values is a 27.5 divided by 2.5 multiply 0 0.97 and this would come out to be 11.34 kilovolt per millimeter 11.34 kilovolt per millimeter now he's asking you for the percentage reduction so the percentage reduction would be how much 15 minus 11.34 divided by 15 multiplied by 100 percent and this comes out to be 24.4 percent it has reduced and from this a further thing could be what could be the moisture content in this particular sample example number 4.3 states what it states that a pure di liquid dielectric is introduced between uniform field electrodes in a test cell and is subjected to breakdown under carefully controlled laboratory condition for which C is 10 to the power 4. So I told you this C depends on what? Laboratory condition. So C is 10 to the power 4. Compute the breakdown strength of the liquid and an average mean free path of 0 0.01 nanometer. So the mean free path is 0 0.01 nanometer. Uh, and ionization potential is 8.02 electron volts. Ionization potential is 8.02 electron volts. So I have a look. This is talking about that avalanche current or that breakdown potential. Breakdown potential would occur at the avalanche current. And at the avalanche current, I told you when the energy gained, that is equal to Q E lambda this becomes equal to the energy lost during collision which is c h u or v which is the velocity so from here you can find out the electric field and that is equal to c h v upon q lambda now you got c you got h you got q you got lambda but you don't know v so v is unknown v you find from the kinetic energy and the kinetic energy is half m v square and you put it equal to the ionization potential why because this should be equal to the ionization potential in order to you know remove electrons and to get you the avalanche conditions so put it equal to 8.02 and multiply it with a 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 19 to give you in joules and then divide it by uh, multiply it with a 2 as well and divide by the mass of electron which is 9.110 power negative 31 whole power 1 over 2 so you will get the velocity the velocity would be what uh, i have it over here velocity is 1.67 in 10 power 6 1.67 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second you can put down the values uh, you know q you know lambda you know c you know h h is what h is the planck's constant 
and you can find out the value of the electric field from here by putting the values which is 6.63 into 10 to the power negative 34 yes so h is 6.63 into 10 to the power negative 34 and from this the electric field comes out to be 69.2 kilovolt per centimeter 69.2 kilovolt per centimeter this is example number 4.3 okay now if we talk about example number 4.4 so for that I will be using a formula which I have not told you previously. So example number 4.4 I'll write over here. What is this? So find the critical value of electric field to cause breakdown in the presence of a spherical bubble of air with radius of 1 micrometer. Radius is given which is 1 micrometer having a permittivity of 80 permittivity of 80 and uh, uh, oh no having a permittivity of 2.3 having a uh, radius of 1 micrometer in insulation oil having a permittivity of 2.3 insulation oil having a permittivity of 2.3 assume the surface tension to be 0 0.043 nanometer surface tension to be 0 0.043 nanometer Newton per meter now the thing is that over here the temperature is very hot you can have a look at my condition so <laughs> excuse the little bit of a mistakes so anyways the critical field required for breakdown this is given by 1.542 1.542 under the root this sigma which is your surface tension divided by a radius into epsilon 1 now we did not prove this formula because we did not need it so over here this sigma is the surface tension of the of the insulating oil okay r is the radius of the bubble and the bubble is assumed to be spherical and similarly epsilon 1 is the permittivity of the oil permittivity of the oil we have the permittivity of the bubble as well E2 E2 is a permittivity of this bubble and we have other things over here but this formula that is applicable to the mechanism that we studied that once a bubble is formed it elongates then you know further elongates under the action of electric field and finally it bridges the context so this formula is applicable to that condition right and assuming what assuming that e2 upon e1 is greater than 20 assuming this you know what happens is that this formula is valid so we put down the values in this formula what uh, 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 far greater than 20 right so please put the values in this formula and you will get the critical electric field required for breakdown so 1.542 Sig, uh, this is 0 0.043 divided by radius is 1 micrometer multiplied by epsilon is 2.3 and epsilon naught 8.85 into 10 to the power negative 12. So the critical electric field comes out to be 0 0.71 megavolt per centimeter. Is that fine? It is. Example 4.5 relates to something that we have not studied so i will go to example number 4.6 directly but before that i have to you know i have to go for for this differential equation i have to go for this differential equation so the thing is that whenever you take a liquid dielectric any liquid in a container so it is exposed to what it is exposed to the atmosphere so it you know there are chances of there are chances of oxygen to attack on that so we will define that by what by the air content or the oxygen content or the molar concentration of oxygen in the sample of dielectric so over here this g of t is the molar concentration of air or it is the molar concentration of oxygen at any time t this g of t right yes 
so this is g of t is the molar concentration of oxygen at any time t right yes p is the probability of dissolving oxygen which is in the rate of centimeters per hour for transformer oil generally it is 0.4 s is the surface area because this is what this is a surface phenomena the area is exposed it will attack the surface the oxygen right yes v is the volume of the container v is the volume of the container and gm is the maximum molar concentration of oxygen or air that a that will above which will make the oil unfit for service okay yes so now the thing is you have to go for the solution of this equation this is a non-homogeneous differential equation and if you know me from my previous courses so the thing is i don't like these differential equations and i don't know how to solve them so basically i would just go from here uh, the thing is that you have a general solution and you have a particular solution so i would just be copying it from here g of t if you go for the solution this would come out to be what this would come out to be k times exponential of mt which would be the general complementary part plus this p times i this would be the particular integral pi particular integral so you've got a complementary part you've got a particular integral to the solution of a non-homogeneous differential equation why is this the non-homogeneous non because its forcing function is non-zero if the forcing function is zero then it is a what then it is a uh, uh, homogeneous so uh, to make the characteristic equation or the homogeneous equation you put it equal to zero so let's say d dt is the m is the slope of it right so m times this thing yes plus p times s by v times g of t and you put this equal to zero so this becomes your homogeneous characteristic equation from which you find your m so from here my m is minus p times s by v is that fine yes now if i write the general solution so i can write it like this that my g of t would be equal to k exponential of minus p s by v times t and plus a g m so let this be my equation number one which is my general solution this is my general solution now for the particular solution i need the value of k and where do i need the value of where do i find the value of k from is from the boundary conditions or from the initially condition from the initial condition so which means let's say at t is equal to zero what do you have is g of t is equal to g naught and g naught is the molar concentration at the initial time for a fresh sample so for a fresh sample you don't have any oxidation occurred and the oxidation occurred is zero so the molar concentration of oxygen would be zero why because these canisters are packed under vacuum these canisters and of the oil are packed under vacuum so g of t would be zero at t is equal to zero so you can put down have a look exponential of zero would be one so you would have the value of k which is equal to what g naught minus a g m g of t is equal to g naught i would just put it over here for the time being i will put it at g naught for the time being i'm putting it as g naught so my k value my k value would come out to be g naught minus g m isn't it like this it is it is so just put this over here just put this in one one implies what that g of t is equal to g naught minus g m multiplied with exponential of minus p times s by v times t plus g m can i do the multiplication i can g of t is equal to g naught exponential of minus p s by v times t minus g m exponential of minus p s by v times t plus a g m what have they done further this uh, term they have taken it to this side so gt minus g naught g of t minus g naught exponential of minus p s by v times t 
and this is equal to gm i would take common from this so 1 minus exponential of minus ps by v times uh, t isn't it like this it is okay now now i put that for fresh sample g naught is equal to zero right at t is equal to zero i i know that it is equal to zero but i will just put it over here that for fresh sample g naught is equal to zero just put it over here so now my g of t would come out to be what my g of t would come out to be gm 1 minus exponential of minus p times s by v times t this is the solution this is the solution to this thing is that fine it is so from here you can do an example and which is example number 4.6 and we will just do it together we will do it together and example number 4.6 states uh, estimate the amount of air absorbed in percentage by 20 liters so the volume is given is 20 liters of a degassed transformer oil the oil remains under atmospheric pressure for 10 hours pressure is atmospheric the time that you have over here is in hours okay which is 10 hours this is not the phenomenon of second this is in hour this takes time 10 hours and at 25 degree centigrade in a vessel with a surface area of 10 to the power 3 centimeters squared area is given is 10 to the power 3 centimeters squared the temperature is given is a 27 degree centigrade we don't have to do anything with it assume a typical value of p is 0.4 per centimeter per hour so the probability of mixing of oxygen for transformer oil is generally 0.4 this is in centimeters per hour so basically what do you have is you don't get a numerical value of this you get it as a percentage of the maximum value right so anyways first you need to uh, uh, convert these liters into centimeter cube or meter cube this is in centimeter square so we'll do that into centimeter cube as well so we know that one meter cube is equal to 1000 liters right or i can say uh, one to the power six ten to the power six centimeter cube i have written it over here yes this is ten one meter cube is 1000 liters which is ten to the power six 10 to the power 6 centimeter cube is that fine centi is 10 to the power negative 2 so multiplied with 3 so this would be 10 to the power yes yes this is fine so from here you can find it out which means that 1 liter 1 liter would be equal to 10 to the power 3 centimeter cube or 20 liters would be 20 into 10 to the power 3 so 20 liters are 20 into 10 to the power 3 centimeter cube isn't it like this it is uh, okay so now let's say we find out g of t let's say we find out my g of t so this would be gm 1 minus exponential of minus p which is 0.4 minus 0.4 s over v s is given is 10 to the power 3 and 20 into 10 to the power 3 is volume okay minus p times s by v and multiply with t which in hours is given as 10 hours so you do the calculation this comes out to be 1.8 gm 1.8 gm so have a look i told you that this will not come out to be a numerical value this comes out to be 1.8 gm which means you need to find the percentage of moisture in a percentage of absorbed air so i would write over here percentage of absorbed air is what this would be equal to so i would write it as gm minus 1.8 gm or 1.8 gm minus gm so to, to to you know exclude the negative sign then the negative sign will will cause confusion so i would write it as a 1.8 gm minus gm upon gm multiplied by a hundred percent 
So have a look, this comes out to be 0.8 multiplied by 100%. So the percentage of the air absorbed is how much? It is an 80%. 80% of the maximum value that is possible it has already absorbed it I believe this is clear and I hope that you have understood it I have enjoyed this topic this liquid dielectrics I did not like it this was a very challenging topic for me but I hope that you have enjoyed it with me after this the to topic of solid insulation is very interesting I just like it very much especially when we move on to the overhead line insulator so anyways i believe we are done with the topic of liquid dielectric still you can see my condition but anyways still if you have any question in your mind you can ask me in the comment section for me this is all about it we've discussed the moisture we've discussed the probability of air we've seen the breakdown mechanisms and we've seen some mathematical calculations i'll see you in the next video where most probably we'll talk about the solid insulation till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye